I want to take a selfish moment real quick. And I want to have my wife stand up. Come on, my Steve. Come here. What's up guys, it's uh, noon on Monday and we're about to uh, board our plane, head back home. As you can tell, my voice is pretty much completely gone. Uh, I was a little sick and just did a lot of talking this weekend. Uh, but the uh, event was incredible. Uh, we're gonna be showing you different pieces of the event throughout this next week. Uh, some unbelievable speakers with some even more incredible uh, messages. But uh, I'd always heard about this meltdown in the desert that you couldn't really explain it, you had to experience it. And uh, we're gonna try our best to explain it. Uh, but I think through these videos and through these clips that you'll see over the next few days, uh, you'll hopefully be able to kind of experience that with us. And that's our goal. Uh, I'm excited for you to see it and the impact that it can make if you really take a hold and grasp uh, the things that will be spoken to you. Oh, through all of that and your mites under your beard, that whole time? <laughs> Son of a bitch, what'd you tell me, dude? Can we sit on the same couch and I hold hands? I'd like that too. I may not be mic'd, actually. Are you mic'd? Here. This one works. It does. Alright, so, the... Every six months or so, so in the last 14 years, I've, I've put together 14,326 pieces of original content. I'm on the five major platforms. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And every six months or so, I gotta re try to reinvent myself, my message, my look, my feel. And as things change in my life, I try to evolve and my messaging changes. And like, sometimes it gets stale. It's hard to continually like change. I do all my own video work, I do my editing. And then out of nowhere, I was kind of in a lull. I'd done stuff for about six, seven months. I hadn't changed things in six or seven months. I was kind of doing the same thing, looking for you. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I see these videos, breadwinner, breadwinner videos. I'm like, oh, that's just like some Gary V stuff. I'm like, eh. Then I watched one. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Then I watched another one. It's like, oh, wait a minute. And then I start digging in to this dude's stuff. And I'm like, he's got like 400 different things he's doing all at the same time. I started looking at my stuff, and I was like, oh, hell no. You're gonna outhouse on me on content creation. There's no way. And then I went to his podcast, and I'm like, oh, so these are like Andy Frisella, Sean Wayland, Don Fawcett, Crazy Resells. How do I not know this dude? Because I'm my friends on his show. So I sent him the notes, and how come I've not been on your show? What a pompous thing to say to a guy who's kind of perk. How come I'm not on your show, dude? You got room for me? So because you hadn't asked. Because I hadn't asked. It went on a show and we became fast friends. I think in that interview, it was like super apparent as to what was happening, the content that he was creating, the message he was delivering, the team he had built. And it was like, dude, I'm in. Like, I'm all in. I'm all in on, like, we've been speaking together on the road, sharing tools and tips, and um, I just, I dove all in to become a fan. Do you guys know these guys? Tell the Harris? Yeah. Tell Apostle Tell But what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do is bring Tyler out for a couple of things here. I'm going to ask him to just to have a conversation like we did with Nate about what he does and how he does it, and how much content he's done to really kind of put this into perspective about what you're doing out in, in the market and what the opportunity is for you. And a big shout out to, to his, his film guy, his right hand guy, TJ, who's one of my, my favorite human beings as well. So TJ, it's good to see you, man. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Tyler, for those for people that don't know you, like how do you introduce yourself? Jeez. The, the way I love to introduce myself is by actually telling the truth, which I think is refreshing. Um, and, and my story is probably like many of yours. Four years ago, I found myself in a really, really bad place. Um, I had gotten terminated from a job that I was excelling in. I'd gone through a, whoop, gone through a really bad divorce. I was out of shape, broke, in debt, pretty much just living a stellar life at that moment. And Everything changed for me. Um, some mentors uh, came into my life, one of which is sitting right here, Joseph. And it was just kind of one of those look at yourself in the mirror moments. And Joseph coined this phrase, Joseph coined this phrase, waging war on personal change. And I love that phrase because it wasn't just, you know, self-development or growing. It was really attacking life. 
and just realized that I had gotten myself into a situation that I had been in. And the encouragement was there if I got myself there, if it was all my fault, then I could get myself out of it. And what happened over the next four years um, has been incredible. I mean, the next 12 months, I made over 300 grand in income. And that was for me, flat, dead, broke, in and dead. Um, next 12 months over 450, next 12 months over 650. And what I realized is that the biggest mistake that I made during that period of time was not documenting that dark moment. Uh, that period of time for those couple of years that I was in a bad place and, and coming out of it, uh, I just had my head down and it was working. But what I knew the second biggest mistake would be is that if I didn't start from there forward. And so I started documenting my life January of, of last year, 2017. And I can still remember like it was yesterday, I put this post out on Facebook and like 90 seconds went by and my wife who's in the audience, she uh, calls me and she's like, what? was that <laughs> and it had to do with this change in my life and I really hadn't talked about my career or anything like that for a long time and, and I said okay I just need you to trust me I have a feeling I have some idea of what I'm doing here you may want to unfriend me you may, may want to unfollow me or block me to at the very least but I'm gonna go at this for a few months and just try to document the real story of what it takes to be successful because I was so sick and tired of seeing people paint this false reality uh, on social media and all the noise that was out there. And so we did that. Um, 400 Facebook Lives later that year. Um, it's over 1,800 posts just on Facebook in the last 17 months. I think over 1,300 of those are videos. Just documenting what it looks like uh, to go out and change your life, to go out and be successful, and using it as a way to pay it forward for what those guys did for me that came into my life, Joseph and Nathan and Jeff, they gave me an opportunity. They breathed really confidence back in me that I didn't have in myself at the time. And I just became just so laser focused on trying to be that for somebody else to try to provide that little bit of spark or just that little tiny pivot. Um, catch somebody that's randomly scrolling through Instagram uh, with a message that just creates that little moment in time where they're like, huh, and the messages started coming in. And I started screenshotting them and, and sending them to my wife. I'm getting emotional now. And it didn't take long for that to happen. And when that did happen, and I would come home on the weekends, I'd show her, like, look at this message, look at this message, look at this message. She started to get it. <laughs> and, and that, that moment on, it was just trying to, it was just trying to chase that feeling. It's, it's extremely addictive, uh, that feeling of, of actually helping someone. Uh, and so that's what it's been like uh, over the last 18 months, just trying to pour my heart and soul uh, on top of my career um, and to give it back and paint it forward, just because I feel like I have a responsibility to do so. Those messages, like bar none, like I'll, I'll put this in the I want you to share one with me. So there's, there's um, a lot of, I'm gonna talk about this now, man. There's a lot of heavy shit going on, you know that? And as we're doing the event, I get a couple hundred messages a day sometimes, and I'm scrolling through, and it's funny you get the positive comments, you get a hundred of them, and you get like one jack off that says something like some dumbass shit, and you look at it, you're like, oh man, I'm a horrible human. So one dude says something, you forget about all the good stuff. And there was a message that was in there two to three days ago. I looked at it, and I read it, and I didn't answer, and I went back to it. And it was this young kid, he was 17, and he saw the talk that we did in St. George. And he goes, hey, I just want to let you know that in, in the talk that you did about being able to embrace who you are and that we've all got stuff and it's our obligation to share this through the stuff that we do to help find that one person. Because I've been diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, because three days ago I was gonna kill myself and I don't know how I found that video. I feel like that video is something that now I'm gonna go do and help other kids like me. I don't know like, in anything that I've ever done in my entire life outside of having children like a complete stranger who I don't know who this kid is. Like literally because I'm showing up every day putting out content, like it, it's, it did something special for that kid. 
I think you get the same kind of messages. Is there one that really stands out? Like at the law, you're, you're in a hotel. So what he does for a living is he's one of the top life insurance policy salesmen in the planet. How did you do last year, 7,000? I've done, it's in the last three years, I've sold 7,500 life insurance policies, one-on-one, face-to-face. -on -one, face -face. Banging on doors. It's not just the one message, it's just every message that always catches you off guard. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think, and like I found one last night or two nights ago when TJ and I were just in that dinner that I had scrolled past and like, you know, when you go through your messages and then you see one that you forgot to open. Mm -hmm. It had been there for like two weeks and it just, just destroyed me. And so it's just, it's like the sum. Can you share what it was? That one, it was, it was a lady that um, she had had cancer and had just gone through a separation with her husband and had just randomly stumbled upon an ad that I was running. It's just a, uh, one, of the, one of the episodes of the vlog. She just stumbled across it when she was scrolling on Facebook. And she had just gotten um, out of her surgery, uh, her, her hysterectomy, and she was in the hospital. And she saw this episode and said it just changed her entire mindset that she was just playing the victim. And she was putting all this blame on her husband for just little things that he was doing. And she just, it was just that one little switch that she needed at that exact moment that only my message could reach her in that moment. Not that I'm the only one that could have reached her, but in that moment, it was only because I was present and I was there when she was scrolling. And she said that everything has changed over the last few weeks. She's like, my husband and I, we're not perfect, but we're great. She's like, my, my career is back on track, my, like everything. And she's like, so if you ever wonder if these videos, if people are seeing them, if they're resonating, if, if people are getting value from them, she's like, please know that it did for me. I'm sitting there, I'm like, I just scrolled past that. Like just had no idea. And so, I mean, it doesn't take a lot of things like that for you to realize what your purpose is on this planet. What are some things you think people can do so there, there are people here that are getting, we call it the meltdown moment, where there's a speaker or a conversation, and something's gonna happen, and like a switch is gonna flip. Anybody had a really heavy moment or somebody said something that really kind of affected you, that you wrote down, do you feel? The, the biggest thing that happens next is you don't sit on that moment. It's like when inspiration strikes, you activate immediately. When inspiration strikes, you don't wait. Like when you feel like you're supposed to do something, you just do it, because if you wait, you'll never do it. For people here that are going through these things and learning these things and kind of you know, coming into some of these heavy moments, as they're trying to step in and leverage social media, what, what kind of feedback? You went through a heavy moment and flipped the switch. What can you tell these people about what they should be, what you've done that maybe they could do? I think you can use social media as an accountability tool. Yeah. I think if you have had that moment where you feel like I'm in a transitional period of, of my life or in a, in a stage of growth in my life, then you can document it on social media just as purely a way for other people to hold you to it or for you to feel held to it by showing other people. Uh, I think that's been a huge thing for me. I mean, I took it to the extreme. I would use it as an accountability tool every week for actual sales. Like I would say, I'm gonna sell this many policies this week and I would update people on Facebook Live throughout the week. And by the end of the week, people are like, hey, I know you're going to the last day of the week. You gotta sell like 12 policies. We're rooting for you. And I'm like, oh. Like, what? Like, I don't even know you. <laughs> and it's just the law of attraction. I'm sitting there talking about this many policies, this many policies, this many policies. And at the end of the week, I'd sit there and count them up, and it'd be that many policies. So I'm sitting there talking about it all the time and talking with people about it. Other people are thinking about it. Um, so that's a super practical uh, example. But I think by putting it out there, you speak it into the world. You speak it into fruition. There's something powerful. Like, they always talk about when you write goals down or when you write these things down, how it's just exponentially greater opportunity or probability that it's going to occur. But to me, there's something about speaking it and speaking it and the fact that it is uncomfortable and embracing that it is uncomfortable. I look back and, and I was just telling somebody this last night, I look back on that period of time when my, my family didn't get it. My friends were making fun of me. People were literally creating videos pretending to be me like what I was doing in the car on these Facebook lives and like sending it to each other and I think back to that time and I'm like what in the world like, how did I keep pushing through that and keep 
documenting, documenting, and making these videos and doing these posts. I mean, it was over six posts a day, every single day for 17 straight months. And I literally have no idea. But I'm so incredibly grateful that I did. Because it's changed, it, to say that social media has changed my life sounds ridiculous. Like it sounds silly, because all the media wants to tell you is that it's running your life. And it's making you less connected. I've never felt more connected, ever. And I've never felt more compassionate, ever. And being actually careful. And so, and so if you use it in that way, and if you use it as an accountability tool, you can only grow from it. And we talked, just when I talked about this idea of embracing discomfort. And if you seek discomfort, the world will only give or deliver you pleasure. Say that again. If you seek discomfort, the world will only deliver you pleasure. If you seek pleasure, the world will only deliver you pain and discomfort. And when you start actually living that, like hitting live on Facebook is very uncomfortable, especially when it's like your mom and like a dude from high school that you hate that's on there, and that's it. And your mom's like, keep it up, son. It's super uncomfortable. But you just keep doing it, and keep doing it, and keep doing it. And then it's like two months in, and it's like seven people. And it's a few months more in, and it's like 14 people. But then all of a sudden it's 50, 100, 200, 300. And the next thing you know, I mean, I had a week last summer where my reach on social media was over 49 million. And that was like 12 months. Dude, just as a, as a friend and somebody who's got familiar with Velas a little bit, dude, I, I just wanted to um, acknowledge like, who we are, like, the power that you bring, like our friendship, and then bringing this dude in, like just bringing him into my circle, like, being connected to, like, to, with what you're doing. Um, it's, it's been, uh, just for me, behind the scenes, it's been transformational for the stuff, the way I think about stuff, the way that I show up, and the things I'm trying to do. Right? So I just want to let you know that uh, I just want to let you I honor and I respect our friendship and what you're doing. It means a lot. Thank you. Where can people find you? If you go to tylerharrispage.com, it'll link up all my stuff. It's tylerharrispage.com. But all the social media stuff is at tylerharrispage. I do want to take a selfish moment real quick. And I want to have my wife stand up. Come on, my stage. Come here. something to say and that all of a sudden just completely, completely escaped me. But I just wanted to thank you. <laughs> so, I spent 238 nights in a hotel last year. with a 20 month old little girl. And, it's cool to talk about these messages that I get. But what I've realized over the last month, literally the last month, is that I've been putting all of you first, myself second, and my family third. And I'm a good salesman, so I insult myself real hard on it, and I insult her even harder. And so she was, she was pretty bought in, but I have a feeling that I had about 18 months, maybe, maybe two years left before I would have burned everything to the ground. And this realization that I now have that like, I really don't care about you guys at all. I care about me and her and that's it. And it's, and it's only from the overflow of that that can really provide any value to you to begin with. Yes. And, and so, I just want to say thank you for hanging in here. Love you.